So what we gotta do here, guys, is he wants concrete under this lean-to here and up against that slab. We poured that last year. So there's quite an elevation change here. So what we're gonna do is uh, dig all this weeds and stuff out. He wants the concrete to come out about 18 inches to two feet past these poles. He wants some poles in there. But you can see it drops off over here. So we're going to create a step right here and then run the concrete a little higher. And then we're gonna make another step here down to this elevation here. And he wants all these, he wants the concrete to come meet this existing slab. We poured, uh, I don't know, a few years ago we poured that. He wants to come out and around all this. So we got to dig all this out, all this vegetation and stuff. Get some, uh, we got a load of limestone, which is this stuff here. This is a, a limestone, looks like, comes out of a quarry. They blast it up and grind it up with uh, machines. So we're going to dig all this out with the hand mar. I got the ditching bucket on it. That'll dig it up and uh, form it up and figure out how we're going to do this pour. Stay tuned. Getting our dug out, guys. We uh, use the Yanmar to dig it. We got Kevin over here. Cleaned up all the dirt. Now we're raking this. There was some limestone in here. We're raking that out and uh, flattening it out. Then we'll tamp it. And then we'll, uh, we got some more limestone. We'll fine tune it after that. That's what we're doing. We're gonna get our pad up to the level of that, and then it's gonna. Um, we change directions. We're gonna actually ramp it down to there. Um, the homeowner wants to be able to mow right along here, so if we made a step, it, he wouldn't be able to mow it right up against the concrete. So he wants to actually track his mower right along here, so you don't have to weed wet. So change, change of plan, but figuring it out on the fly. And then there's going to be a little bit of a ramp going up here because the grade goes way up instead of having a step here. That's how we're going to do it. We are over at one of his other buildings here. And he wants to put concrete coming out like this. 18 inches away from these poles. And there's a lean to over the whole thing. He wants it 18 inches out on this side too. To connect to pad we poured a few years back so that's what we're doing now uh, we got that one over there pretty much already um, the gophers uh, tamping it up and then we can lay our wire mesh I'll show you that in a minute it's got a bunch of steps in it or not steps it's like an angle like a ramp going up through there because of the elevation change Okay guys, we're just packing up. Um, this is what everything looks like. We got this all formed up. You can see it's got some rises in it. Because of the grade change, that's how we wanted to do it. We've got rebars plucked into this pad to tie it together. And uh, he wants to be able to run his lawnmower, right? put the wheel on there and go right up this dirt. That way you don't want the weed whack. So that's why we did that. And then over here, we got this all ready to rock and roll. Add it onto this. We do have some holes drilled. We gotta get some rebar. We need one, two, three, four, five rebars there. And we're gonna pour all that. So this, uh, thing we got all ready today and we'll pour that tomorrow morning and it's about 4 30 and that another word for that is beer 30 so we're gonna get out of here and we will see you guys in the morning here comes the mode guys we'll see who's coming in today we got 11 yards here We got these couple little pours to do. Right down the line, baby. Circle T. 315-963-2231. A 
What's up, buddy? Right up there, man. It's Chad. Okay. Circle T, baby, right there. They are the best concrete company around here. That's for sure. Uh, it is like 6.45 a.m., guys. Sun's just coming up. We got Rotor here, our mascot. Right, Ro? He keeps seeing rabbits, so he's going crazy. Hey, bub. You stay back out of the way, okay? We got work to do. We got me, Big Biscuit, Dustin, and Mike. We're gonna rip this out today. It's not a big pour, it's just kind of uh, broken up a little bit. See how it goes. We're gonna start over here. Get this section done first. Throwing a couple shoots on there. Look at that t-shirt or sweatshirt. Alright guys, we're gonna start pouring down the deal. Hey guys, so I told Chad what, that we were gonna need the concrete to be pretty stiff to uh, pour this um, ramp here because it's got quite an elevation change. And uh, he said, okay, no problem. And he didn't add any water to this mix. Um, evidently, it came from the plant like that. I don't know what happened. Maybe the aggregate was wet or something. Um, I'm not really sure, but stuff like this does happen. So we start pouring out here, and I said, oh, you know, um, why don't you uh, mix it up a little bit, beat it up a little bit. And uh, we were hoping that there was just some water maybe towards the top of the drum, and it would mix up and it would be okay. So that's what we're doing here. We're just sitting there letting them mix it up a little bit. And then we started pouring again right here. And we're raking it out. And this is, um, this slump here is about a six and a half slump, which is pretty loose. Um, we don't really want it that loose. It's not going to go down this hill at all. So we decided to switch gears here. We're going to go over and pour the we're other side. We're switching here. gears, guys. We're moving over to the other pad because the concrete is a little wetter than what I wanted so um, we got a big hill over on the other side to go down so we're gonna work over here
So we get over here, guys, and we start pouring the concrete. And uh, it's working out okay over here because this is relatively flat. We don't have any um, grade change there, elevation change we got to deal with. But it's really loose, you know, and uh, it just doesn't look good. You'll see the customer come in here in a minute. Um, he's a good customer of ours. We've been pouring concrete at his house every year for probably five or six years. He's always adding his driveway or doing something. But you'll see him um, step into the frame here in a minute. And he's not too happy with this concrete. He knows what it's supposed to look like. Right there he is. That's Frank, big Frank. He's uh, asking me, he goes, what is this concrete? He looks like cow manure, basically. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to call the plant and see what they want to do. Maybe they got some slump buster. Slump buster is like a, a additive you can throw into the truck and it'll stiffen the load back up. So um, I made a call and I believe Chad made a call as well to dispatch to see if they had some slump buster because we weren't far from the plant. We thought maybe we could um, make this work, but um, they, evidently they didn't have any slump busters. So we end up having to reject this concrete this side right here. Nice and tight and just have so that we ended up with up about a nine slump, guys. Yeah. Something went haywire here. We're not sure. What? The driver said he did oh. not add water to it when he got here. So this came in real wet like this. So we are rejecting that truck, honestly. Um, we have no choice at this point. So. Uh, we probably got eight yards on that truck. We're sending it back to the plant. I called uh, the dispatch guy because we will never get it to work over here. They were looking for what's called slump buster, which is just uh, something you can throw in the truck to uh, tighten up your load. But this piece over here is at least a 12 inch transition, probably more than that. It's probably more than 12 inches from this corner. It dives down like six inches to here and this is flat and then it dives down again all the way down to here and then it's flat so we are going to get some new mud we gotta wait we're close to the plant so not gonna be a big deal um circle t's gonna take care of us on this sidewalk over here um that's gonna be free um the homeowner's good with that because you know that's a wet wet piece of concrete but he's not driving anything but a lawnmower on this on this he's gonna drive his lawnmower along the edge so he's not too uh upset about that but we certainly didn't want to use it over here because he drives equipment in and out of that garage there so we don't want weak concrete on that and also like i said coming down that hill it's just not gonna work so little snafu but we'll overcome it the eaves are dripping on on it a little bit too today from the steel you can see the drip lines on it yeah. to, hopefully that'll dry out but that's white metal that takes a little longer that white metal don't dry like the black metal i just dropped my phone you can see the dew along this roof i think you can see it i can see it pretty good boy we're having a rough start this morning But we'll see. We'll get we'll get through it. What do they say? Shit happens. Yeah. Here comes our mud, guys. Our second load of mud. Hopefully it's uh, a little better than the first load. <laughs> we'll uh, we're gonna try to get this poured out. We got that done, obviously. I think it might be. I don't know if it's Chad again or not. but you can see the elevation change here. So we're gonna wanna pour this out a little bit tighter than like a eight slump.
Well guys, you can see the difference in this mud here, how uh, tight this is. It's actually, it'll stack right up if you just watch how it pours out. This is probably like a good four slump. So I was exaggerating a little bit on the other mud being a nine when I was I was just a little frustrated. This, this is about a four. The other stuff was about a six and a half, seven um, slump. You know, without doing a slump test, it's hard to tell, but it just wasn't gonna work for this application. And uh, when you wet down concrete that much, it's just not as good. It's just not going to be as good a concrete. So um, this homeowner, you know, he knew he knew what was going on. So um, to make it right, like I said earlier in the video, Circle T just um, said they wouldn't charge him for that piece of concrete. So he was happy with that, like I said, because he's not driving anything but his lawnmower over in that area. And that concrete dried out all right, and we got a decent finish on it. But... It's not going to be as good as this concrete here that we poured with a nice tight slump here. But um, you could see the elevation changes here. You got a six inch drop from where we started just to the edge of that doorway. Then she's flat. Then it probably drops another six to eight inches as it comes down the hill right in this area. After you get past this doorway, it drops again quite a bit. So this mud's not fun to work with, don't get me wrong. Um, the looser mud's a lot better to work with, but when you're going downhill like this and uh, you got to have it tight, it's just harder to work with. But screeding it's no fun or nothing like that. But we ended up uh, getting it in here pretty nice, and uh, you'll see what it looks like in the end. So me and Mike are just screeding it down through here, and uh, you see Big Biscuit puddling it out. But um, it doesn't like to close up this um stiffer mud doesn't like to close up it both floats a little harder it screeds harder everything about it is kind of a pain but um, this is what you got to do when you're doing ramps or anything like that you just can't pour it with wet with a wet concrete or um, a high slump concrete it's just going to roll down the hill and you're not going to end up with what you want and uh, this customer wanted this is exactly what he wanted he was really happy with uh, how we set this up um, in the beginning of the video, I was talking about we were going to put stairs here, but he wants to actually drive his lawnmower right up the edge of this thing. We're going to backfill it, and then he doesn't have to do any weed whacking. That's why he wanted this. Um, we decided not to do a step because he wouldn't be able to drive his lawnmower up the edge of it. But the way we did this, he can just mow. He can put one wheel on the concrete and just mow right up through there, and he doesn't have to weed whack. So. Um, that's what why you wanted it like this, but you can see we're fighting our way down through here getting it in screening it out both floating behind ourselves um, Everybody's doing what they can do here, and uh, this is how we do it Most of the stuff we've been just pulling off by hand lately. We do have a viber screed, but um, Also when you're doing um, ramps and stuff the viber screed doesn't work as good it tends to uh, want to roll the concrete down the hill um, where this um, when you do it by hand it doesn't do that it just works better you can just kind of keep it right where you want it especially with this stiffer slump here once we get to the bottom of here this angle is pretty good you can really see the elevation change here 
But once we get down to the bottom of here, it flattens back out again. So um, right here, this little skinny piece, after I bow float this, this next skinny piece is just flat. So um, that we really didn't need thick mud there, but we weren't, weren't going to add water to it at this point, obviously. So this mud's like a four slump. Love. You like it just how it is? Huh? You like it just how it is? You love that pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Frank loves it. Helped you right there. Homeowner is definitely happy. He's over here with a smile on his face. Right there, Frank. Frank, wave to the camera. Happy customer right there. Wiping off the wall from the splatter from uh, being so wet. End up hitting the edges and stuff, guys, right now. Nagging it out. I'm gonna broom it. It's gonna be a broom finish. He's firming right up now.
All right, guys, we are here the next day. Pulled all the forms off. And that is what she looks like. Come out real nice. Customer's super happy with it. He likes the way this elevation changes here as you go up this hill. That's gonna work out good for him so he can mow right up against it. We are gonna make some cuts. The boys are getting the tape out to lay it out. I'll show you this piece over here. This was the real wet piece. Um, so Circle T made it right with the customer. Um, they actually gave us this concrete that we put in here. They said that's free. They didn't even charge us for it. So that was, uh, I don't know, that was about three yards that they uh, just gave to us. So that was good. Um, it seemed to harden up all right. This was more flat over here. We didn't, it's got a little ramp here, but nothing is is uh, drastic as over here we needed to pour this thicker you know a, a lower slump we needed to pour this because of that that big ramp right there there's quite a difference from up here down to here guys and then it flattens out this piece is flat but that whole thing you've seen how tight we had the concrete as we poured it so that was good of them uh little mistake by by uh, Circle T on that load, but they made it right with us. So, um, you know, it happens sometimes, but we're gonna cut this up. We're gonna backfill it, get some topsoil and put along here. And I'll show you what everything looks like before we leave. I got Kevin the Kubota over there. We're gonna get her done. The boys are laying out the cuts. Obviously we're gonna cut it there. Gonna cut it there. Probably in a couple more up here two three more okay guys she's all back filled she's cut I'll show you what the whole job looks like this is all done up nice and if you slide over here this one's all nicely back filled as well He's gonna get some topsoil. He's got a backhoe. He's gonna put a little more on top of this. So we left it a little low. 